In this video I'm going to be talking about how I designed the structure of the animatronic Togepi in Maya. So let's take a look. The structure of the Togepi animatronic was built inside of Maya and then 3D printed on a MakerBot. So here's kind of an overview of all the different structure that goes into it. Let me hide the egg. So underneath this is the main bulk of the structure that holds as you can see a placeholder for the servos. This holds the breadboard on the side. This holds the Arduino. This was not in the final because it was getting in the way. This was supposed to hold the battery but in the end I just rested the battery right here. So then this whole structure uh, I have some of the pieces hidden but this all kind of fits down inside of the egg here. And hide the inner mix. We'll hide those. So those fit down into those pegs there and I actually put magnets inside of there uh, to hold it better after it was printed because it would move around. And as you can see the shell is a bunch of pieces that have these little tabs for screwing together to hold its shape and then because you know 3D printer isn't 100% accurate I had to do a lot of bondo work on the outside and sanding to make it look really nice. You can see here this is where I've connected the shells for the holes and then here this is the arm holder that connects to those little slots right there. So that was just stuck there and glued on and the servo had another piece on it that moves the arm. This is a little piece that sticks inside of that hole over there and just with friction keeps the silicone on. It worked but it didn't work as well as I had hoped. Now my process for when I export these things is I generally take a bunch of these objects that are all separate and I do boolean operations on them. So if I go to mesh, booleans, and do like a union and it'll put them together and then once I get all the ones that I want put together into one object then I'll triangulate them and export that. So that generally gives me a nice solid object for printing whereas if I use multiple pieces then it makes the shells of each object get printed and not completely hollow which just takes more time it's probably a little more structurally sound but generally just a straight object that's all merged together works fine. Up here you'll see something a little bit different than what's in the actual animatronic. I had designed originally these servo holders at the top that would actually move each individual horn. Well it turned out that the silicone was just too heavy for that to work so I got rid of all this stuff at the top and just put a little molded piece on top to hold it steady for the silicone to rest on. Also to note, uh, this is very different from my first animatronic which was the Tiki Room bird, which had all the weight of the servo on on the pivot. So the entire parrot was on one pivot on one servo for the body and then for the head as well. This transfers all the weight away from the servo. So right here, you can see that this goes down into a hole and all the weight is resting right here. This servo turns these little tabs to make everything move. Same with the head here, is it's got uh, connections here for the servo. And then in here, I actually measured it so that instead of this 3D piece right here, I didn't print that. I just got a a long screw or a, a long uh, bolt from Home Depot that was the same size and stuck it in there. So all of the weight for the tilting also rests on there. So it takes a lot of the pressure off of the servos. So that's how I designed the structure in Maya, and then after each one of those pieces is done, I send it right on over here to my MakerBot Replicator 2. Uh, it's a little bit of an older model, but it still works great for me, as long as you just keep it maintained and clean. And here's a little time lapse of the foot that was printed. So obviously that was a time lapse. The actual footage for that video was about three hours long. And that was on low quality as well. In one of the other videos you're going to see me use a product called XTC3D. 
it's a really great product for brushing on to 3D prints and it kind of seeps in and fills all the gaps so that you can then sand it and it becomes really smooth with really very little of the material.